Hi, I'm Helmut Rakamon, and this talk is about our paper on mobile mood tracking. By end of this talk, we learn about a self-reported tool that captures mood with only two questions, which is especially suitable for longitudinal studies. This mood measurement instrument gives positive activation and negative activation scores, which are based on a classic measure of mood commonly known as PANAS. We also learn whether a mood measure that is adaptive in lens could be a good solution for capturing mood and improving the user experience or compliance. Mood is an essential concept that impacts our behavior and health. In order to build effective mood aware systems, we first need to detect mood. And because it is highly subjective, the standard way of measuring mood is via self-report. Even when the interest is to automatically predict mood, we still need to rely on self-reported mood measure to train and build the models. In this research, we also highlight two concepts, app quality and assessment quality. Every mood measurement using a smartphone is need to consider both, but balancing the two is often a challenge. The assessment quality refers to the mood measure's validity, reliability, and relevance. The app quality, on the other hand, is more about the user experience of the application, which directly may impact user compliance. So suppose we want to build a mood tracker. To have a proper assessment quality, we can either use classic instruments or devise new ones and then validate them. The classic instruments are basically pen and paper based questionnaires, sometimes too long with over 100 items. So they are not typically validated for smartphones. To have a high app quality, one may redesign or modify the classic instruments, which can also impact the assessment quality. Unfortunately, we saw often works that either address only the app quality or assessment quality, or sometimes neither, for example, um, when an arbitrary measure with no basis is used. Addressing these challenges, we answered three main research questions, but we only talk about the first and the third one here. The first one is about whether a two item overall question can be used to capture mood using positive and negative activations, which refer to a two dimensional structure of mood. We then investigated these questions further with various measurement types. To answer the research questions, we built an application containing several mood measurement instruments with self contained pre study and post study functionalities. This picture summarizes the longitudinal study procedure of two weeks. Um, there was a pre-study followed by experience sampling, both twice daily and weekly, and ended with a post-study survey. Uh, we then built four independent data samples to investigate our research questions. These figures show what users saw in most sampling events. Users first started with two overall questions and then filled out the complete questionnaires with 10 items. The results of the day-to-day -day measurement showed a strong correlation between the overall mood determined by the two questions and the one calculated from the long questionnaire. We observed a similar pattern also for other independent data samples, namely the weekly assessment and one-time assessment. As a result, the two overall questions give a good estimation of high and low um, positive and negative activation values, and therefore um, is a suitable option for mood tracking with the smartphones. Our third research question was about adaptively reducing the number of questions depending on the user's mood and its impact on the user experience or compliance. The goal was to have a more complete picture of the user's mood by capturing both overall mood and certain level of details. The concept for adaptive measure was to rely on the two overall questions to determine mood fluctuations and accordingly ask for the question to find out which specific mood states have changed. Um, as a result, we could possibly reduce the number of questions that a user had to answer. Um, we answered these research questions using the day-to-day -day sample or sample A offline, and we also tested it online with other users. Sample A were those users who completed both the overall questions and 10 questions in each sampling event. Using the adaptive algorithm, uh, users would have seen the adaptively reduced questions instead of the complete ones, for about 29% of the cases. Um, the resulting mood values were highly correlated with the original measures. And we also find out that the positive activation and negative activations are slightly different in the way they possibly last. And um, they should therefore be modeled separately. Using the adaptive algorithm online, 64% of the time questions were reduced and in total 
62% fewer questions were answered. Comparing the use of adaptive approach with the classic approach, the number of completed mood entries were similar, although users of adaptive approach had to answer about 5,000 questions less. No major difference between user compliance nor completion rate were found, and in particular, most dropouts happened within the first two days of the study, similarly affecting both adaptive measure and classic version. This is most likely related to the user's expectation of a measurement session beforehand. Finally, although user experience of the adaptive design was slightly better than the classic design on average, there was no significant difference between the two groups. An interesting point here was the relatively good usability and user experience score of the classic measure, something to remember as a baseline for future claims of improved usability or user experience. Um, thank you very much for your attention.